Hello and welcome back. We are continuing our talk about enumerations. Today specifically, I want to talk about functions and properties within enums. So let's get started. We'll create an enum. We'll call it COVID vaccines here. Okay. Uh, first, we'll list some cases. We will see what it looks like to add properties to an enum. And we'll also take a look at functions or methods. Methods within an enum. Okay, so here we could talk about functions or we could also talk about methods because what we'll be talking about is if uh, functions within types, um, this is a custom type called COVID vaccine or vaccine. Um, it's a custom type. Within custom types, when we have functions, we refer to them as methods. So methods are functions within custom types. Okay, great. So here our cases will be, case one, we'll have Pfizer. Case two, we'll have Moderna. Case three, we will have AstraZeneca. Our fourth case will be Janssen's here. Make sure I spell this correctly. And our last case will have Novavax. Great. Okay. So as we saw um, in our introduction video to enumerations, here we could also have uh, raw values. So I'll have a raw value of type string. So here, this is a raw value for review, raw value of type string. And why are we using this raw value? Now we could go ahead and add our own custom name to Pfizer's case, for example. So here I could say Pfizer, I could say Moderna here, here, I could go ahead and say AstraZeneca. I'll go ahead and put in Janssen's here. And lastly, we have Novavax. Oh, great. So, so far we have our enum cases all written up. Um, let's go ahead and create an instance. So create an instance of COVID vaccine. So here I could create an instance called, just call it vaccine to keep it generic. And it's gonna be COVID vaccine and I'll instantiate it with Pfizer, just like that, okay? If I go ahead and I print like we did previously, I could print the vaccine, right? And here it just shows Pfizer, the type, or I could also get access to now the raw value. So the raw value will be uppercase Pfizer, okay? So far, so good. So this is basically where we were with the previous enumeration video. Now, uh, this particular video is talking about properties and methods, right? So let's see what that looks like. Um, so on my vaccine, I wanna get information about this particular vaccine, for example. So how can I do that? Well, since this is our first custom type we're seeing, other custom types we'll see, we'll see classes, we'll see structs, but for now, this is an enum. So I'll create a method. Here, this is a function. Again, method uh, functions in types are called methods. So here I'll create a method, call it info, okay? So info will basically give me back information about a particular vaccine. In our case, we created an instance of a vaccine, instantiated it to Pfizer. So now I want to get information about Pfizer, right? So this is an enum. I'm in an enum object. Our enum object is within this body here from line five to line 19. So this encapsulates the object. In the object, we have cases, properties, methods, okay? So we're coming across this method called info. So now, whatever the instance is, I want to find out what instance I'm dealing with. So let's pause here for a second. 
So yesterday or previously we spoke about enumerations, but now we are switching again here. I'm switching. I'm using a switch statement on an enum. Self here represents the enum instance. So self represents the enum instance. In our case, we created an instance called Pfizer. So when this enum comes here, it's as if we are uh, changing this to Pfizer here, okay? So this self here represents our instance we created on line 25, okay? So when we call our function, it's going to refer to whatever instance it is. It could be any of those five instances. So now, as we saw earlier, we could switch on it. And now I'll go through cases. So my case here, I'll say case Pfizer, if it's Pfizer or Moderna, I want to have a print message, right? Otherwise, I will default to a different print message. Why Pfizer and Moderna? Currently, um, in the United States, those are the two vaccines we could take, and those are recommended and approved by the FDA, okay? So those are safe for use. So what I want to say is, in my print statement, get information about it. In my print statement, I could say um, authorized authorized um, and recommended by the FDA, for example, or CDC, recommended by CDC. Okay, great. And the CDC stands for Centers Disease Control. That's uh, great. All right, so here we are. Uh, and now in the default statement, if it's not authorized or recommended yet, right? We'll have a different print message. Here we'll say um, is in phase three clinical trials. Okay. So if it's not authorized, it's in it's in phase three. Again, we have those two vaccines, they're authorized, and those three vaccines here, they're currently in phase three of clinical trials. Okay, pending approval. Great. So now on my on my instance of vaccine, I could now do vaccine call the function dot info. Okay, and that info will call again um, our function or our method, and based on the case, it will do the appropriate print statement. So here, if I go ahead and run my playgrounds. I will see Pfizer is authorized and recommended by the CDC. So by the CDC, and I have an extra space here. So now if I change my instance to say AstraZeneca, we'll get a different print statement because AstraZeneca is still in clinical trials, okay? So this is a good way to fully encapsulate um, your object. In our case, my object is COVID vaccine. I added an info method on it that gets information based on the instance. Great. Other things we could add to an enum, we could also add properties here. So you cannot add stored properties. So I can say like name, string, like that. It has to be a computed property. So here it says enums must not contain stored properties. This is a stored property, okay? We cannot do this here. So what we can do is create a computed property. In my case, I'll create a computed property, call it name. And name, this is a computed property. It will return some value. In our case, I just want to return um, self dot raw value. Okay. Basically, again, self here represents the instance. Okay? Self represents the instance of that particular enum, or self represents the enum instance. In our case, we created an instance AstraZeneca. So if I was to go ahead and um, print vaccine.name, it will just print out AstraZeneca right here, okay? So that's the instance here. And now I could use this uh, instance property here. This is an instance property. It works on instances. So here I could use this instance property right in our method. 
using string interpolation here. I could say name. In that case, I could say Pfizer is authorized and recommended by the CDC. Or if I'm dealing with one of the three, I could say name, for example, AstraZeneca is in phase three clinical trials. So now that becomes a bit more dynamic. So now if I was to run my code again, I'll see AstraZeneca. Now it has the name, it knows what name it is. If I change this name to say Janssen's here, it will say Janssen's is in phase three. Cool, great. Okay, so we saw this, we could add more functionality as well. So I have properties, I could add another property here. In our case, we'll add a property called number of shots, for example. And this will return a tuple of int and uh, int. Okay. And remember back in our tuple video, our tuple, we could give it label names to make it easier to access. So I could say shot, example, number of shots. And I could say days here, like number of days between the first shot and the second shot. Okay. So here, number of days. And now, again, we're using an enum. So we need to switch on the enum to find out what case we are dealing with. So here, I'll switch on self. And I'll say case Pfizer. What do we want to return? We want to return, let me get those numbers correct. So the Pfizer vaccine takes two shots. And between those two shots, it's 21 days. The next one is Moderna here. And it is similar, two shots, but more days between shots. So 28 days between shots. So here we'll say 28 days between the first and second shot. Okay, cool, great. So here we have our computed property again. And remember, this is a computed property. Cool, great. Uh, cool, so now here we are, switch must be exhaustive. Remember from our introduction to enums. So here it is not exhaustive because we have five cases and in our switch statement, we are only dealing with two cases. So how can we fix that? I'll give you a second. Well, we could add a default statement here. So if I add a default statement, I could return some default value. In our case, we'll just return negative one and negative one, which implies it is not currently available, for example. So now um, the compiler is happy. We are taking care of all the cases. We have a default uh, fall through here. So now we could actually use our number of shots. For example, well, if I use number of shots, if I print, um, vaccine that number of shots it will return minus one minus one because Janssen's currently doesn't isn't um, approved yet but if I change this to say Moderna here it will tell us number of shots is two and the days between is 28 okay so again enums super powerful let's see what else we could add to our enum object Lastly, we'll add one more property. It could be a function, but we'll just add a property just to so show uh, type properties. So here we'll come across what's known as a type property. And here we will start off with a static. We'll say var, we'll say updates. It was going to return a string. Okay, so this here is known as a type property. We'll talk more about properties later, but this is a type property. It works on the type. Example, I would say COVID vaccine dot updates. This is how I'd call this, as opposed to creating an instance like Pfizer, for example. This is not an instance property. This is known as a type property. It works on the type, okay? Cool, great. So now what do we wanna say for our updates? Well. I will basically grab the text from the CDC's website and let's return that text. So we'll say return, again, we're returning a string. So we'll say return 
as of December 28th, 2020, large scale phase three trials are in progress or being planned for three vaccines in the United States. Okay, we know those three vaccines, so we could put those three vaccines into uh, interpolation here. So here I could say COVID vaccine. Again, those are type properties, so I need to use the type itself. AstraZeneca, that name is one of those vaccines. My next vaccine is COVID vaccine. Uh, the next one is Janssen's, that name. And the third one is COVID vaccine dot uh, Novavax here. Cool. So now we have a next property we could access. So now this is a type property. So it doesn't work on an instance. It's work, it works on the type itself. So this is a type property. So the way I would use this, I would simply say COVID vaccine dot updates. Let me just in, put this in a print statement like this. And now if I run my code, we'll get um, as of December 28th, uh, those are the three trials, um, AstraZeneca, Janssen's and Novavax. Novavax, did we not, uh, this is uppercase, oh, I did not specify name here. So if I run this again, we should now get uppercase for Novavax, which we do, great. So I think this is all we're gonna cover today. Let's just review what we did. So again, this is um, talking further about enumerations. And here today we took a look at functions or rather methods um, and properties, right? So here we have our cases and we're able to add properties to our enum and we're able to switch on self. And remember self here represents what did I document it? Here, self represents the enum instance. So if we create a Moderna instance or a Pfizer instance, it switches on whatever instance and it figures out, am I talking about Pfizer? Or am I talking about Moderna? Or am I talking about something else? If I'm talking about something else, that's not those two. I'll go ahead and print. It's in phase three trials. Okay, great. So again, um, thank you for watching. Stay safe.